We hope that you enjoy this message. For additional talks, please visit abcchurch.com. Well, I'm excited to have the opportunity to um, launch us into a brand new series. And we're going to start a new series today, which is entitled Engage. And um, in Scripture, Jesus at one point in time has asked this question. The question is, um, what is the greatest of all of the commandments? And his response to the person who was asking was, the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then he says, the second is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. So what we're going to talk about in the coming weeks is we're going to talk about a few different ways that we can um, make some tweaks within our lives so that we can be more effective in loving God with everything and growing close to him and loving others in deeper ways so that we can also uh, grow close to them. Over the last little while, um, I have been just kind of asking this question, asking myself this question, asking God this question, saying, like, I've been in a relationship with the Lord for quite a long time, and I feel like I have a a healthy relationship with Him, Um, but I've just been asking this question, what what could I do, Um, what could I adjust in order for my relationship with Him to grow closer and to go deeper? And um, the more that I've been thinking about this, I just keep coming back to the same thought, the same theme. And that theme is prayer, uh, my prayer life. I think I could probably make little adjustments in the way that I pray pray, and my approach to it. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about prayer. And um, prayer is our form of communication with God. It's, it's the way that we talk to him. We talk to him through prayer. Um, oftentimes, when relationships have healthy communication... Um, that relationship will have an element of closeness and intimacy. And um, I think that's what we want to experience with our Heavenly Father. So we're going to talk a little bit about prayer today um, and how possibly taking some slightly different approaches to prayer may enhance our engagement with God, may bring us closer in our relationships to Him. If you'd like to follow along your notes, point number one is our approach to prayer will greatly influence how engaging and effective it is. So I think that our approach to prayer can um, largely affect how engaged or how disengaged we feel when it comes to our relationship with the Lord. And I think there are certain things that we can do that can bring us to the point where we do kind of feel disengaged when it comes to our prayer life. Let me give you a couple of examples um, of how we might disengage. Throughout the course of my life, I feel like I have been, I've sat in, I've been involved in quite a few like really long prayer meetings, okay, really long. And I'm sure the prayer meetings that I attended, probably the individual who was leading those prayer meetings probably thought, this is incredible, this is engaging, just filled with passion. But sadly for me, I think at times it was kind of the opposite uh, experience of just going, oh my goodness, this is so long and boring and what are we, gonna, what are we praying about all these, you know, what, what are these crazy themes that we're going after? I remember at one point in time I actually... Um, fell asleep during a prayer meeting. So that was an <laughs> interesting experience. And um, uh, to be fair, I had just f- flown from, uh, from Houston over to Scotland. I was going to go over there on a mission trip, so I had a bit of jet lag kicking in. The individual who was leading the prayer meeting was this um, African gentleman, and he had this deep, soothing, like, African voice. So I, f- I just felt like I it's like I had no chance, right? There's like no hope there. <laughs> but kind of an extreme case of disengagement when it comes to prayer, right? Just a, a tough one. I think there can also be moments where um, even, on, even when it comes to themes that are maybe uh, have a degree of, of feeling personal, where we can still end up, um, because of the themes, feeling a sense of uh, disengagement when it comes to, to prayer and our relationship with the Lord. Uh, to give you an example of what I'm talking about, let's watch this, the, this video. Dear God, thank you for your goodness. Lord, I know you want me to be blessed and happy. And that's why, God, I pray you, please, 
Let me have this Corvette I've been looking at. I really like it. And God, if it be your will, please make it cherry red. Amen. Lord, I'm single. And I'd really like to find that special someone. I kind of thought you'd have this problem figured out by now. Anyway, now is the time, Lord. Make it happen. Bring me a man. Lord, I know it is your desire to make your children happy. And I've got a situation here. Um, all of my neighbors have gotten in-ground pools. I'm the only one on the block that doesn't have one. God, you can do better than this. As you know, Lord, I just released my first album, and it's not getting the kind of attention I hoped for. God, I know that you are capable of anything. You're all powerful. So please, Lord, make my album trend. Make it trend, Lord, make it trend. Ignite social media with your holy fire so that I may be glorified in all I do. Amen. What's going on? Why isn't this working? Come on! I want this car! God, give it to me! Right now! Hello? <laughs> Hello? I don't understand! Where's my pool? Why is this not working? What is wrong with this thing? God, what are you doing? I want this! What is going on? Look out in front of my friend! Are you kidding me? Come on, God. What am I supposed to do? Are you listening to me? Give me a break here! Uh, this is stupid! Come oh, on! What is the matter? God! I want my car! Ugh, oh, God! Are you even listening to me? God, are you even listening to me? I think that our approach to prayer um, can either bring us to the point of feeling close and connected to God or kind of distanced and disconnected. Today, what I want to do is I want us to take a look at a model of prayer laid out by Jesus that gives us just a guide for how we can pray prayers that will hopefully uh, kind of solve our prayer issue and help us to, to feel engaged and connected uh, to our Heavenly Father. Our second point today is that the Lord's Prayer gives us a guide for drawing closer to our Heavenly Father. So we're going to take a look at a prayer that you're probably pretty familiar with. And um, within this prayer, there are five different themes. And um, hopefully by praying these themes, we can experience the connectedness, uh, the engagement that we want to experience in bringing us closer to God. So let's start by reading um, the Lord's Prayer, Matthew 6, 9 through 13. This is Jesus teaching us how to pray. And he says this, this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. That's where it ends. Like oftentimes there, I think over the course of time, there's been an, a, a, an ending that's been added onto it. Um, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. But surprisingly, that's actually not, uh, that's not on the ending of this prayer. So it ends a little bit differently. We'll talk about that, that in a little while. So we're going to take a look at five themes within this prayer, within the, the Lord's Prayer. Hopefully five themes that can impact our lives and bring us closer to God if we'll begin to weave them into our prayer lives. The first theme is point number one, start with praise. Start with praise. So in Matthew 6, 9, Jesus starts out and says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
Before we start getting into um, just the elements of, of praise and talking about praise, what I want to just start off with is just um, highlighting who we're actually talking to. Because in this prayer, we're not talking to some like distant being that's way out there, that's disengaged emotionally, that's like out in space or something like that. We're talking to a loving, our loving, caring Heavenly Father, somebody who loves us and wants to be engaged in each uh, little intricate detail within our lives. Loving Heavenly Father. I'm a father, and um, I have four kids, okay? Four kids. And um, a little while back, um, I had to do a little bit of work on our house. What had happened is there was a little bit of shifting that had taken place. There were a couple of sheets of drywall where they had just shifted enough that um, it wasn't like they cracked, but it just had like a, a perfectly straight line between these two sheets of drywall. So I thought, well, I better get up there and fix it. So went up on the ladder, filled the gap, textured it, painted it, and, um, and took care of it. It looked, looked all right. So my wife, Amy, she was uh, out with the kids, ended up coming home. They got home. And when they got home, um, I showed her what, what I worked on. And then Amy goes uh, and brings my little daughter, Kenzie. She's five years old, uh, over, and she goes, um, yeah, dad, dad fixed the crack. Look at the crack. And everybody knew where the crack was, right? It was like up there, the straight line on the drywall. So Kenzie looks up. My five-year-old daughter looks up, and she sees where the crack used to be, and she can't see the crack anymore. And there was just this really cool moment. I was like kind of far enough away that I could see her, but kind of not in the same room. And when she looked up and she saw this crack had been patched and she couldn't see it anymore, she just had kind of this reactionary moment where she just expressed uh, affection. And in this moment, she just looked at the crack she turned around, it wasn't there anymore. She turned around and she just goes, Dad is awesome! <laughs> Tell you what, watching her, this little five year old girl, my daughter, that day, man, she just absolutely like lit up uh, my day, lit up my week, my, my month, lit up my life. I was like, what a, what a moment, you know, um, just ex experiencing this, um, this moment of just raw, affectionate uh, expression from her. As a father, it just got straight to my heart. And I think for when it comes to our Heavenly Father, I think the same is true for Him. You know, in moments where we come and we praise Him, and we share things that we love about Him, just in an affectionate um, expression to Him of the things that we love about Him, I think it really moves his heart, and I think he loves it. He's an incredibly loving Heavenly Father. Whenever we praise God, I think um, something else happens. I think there's an impact that takes place oftentimes within us. And sometimes what ends up happening is our perspective begins to, um, to shift. I don't know if you ever have moments um, like this, but from time to time I feel like I have moments where I just feel like the weight of the world coming down, and it feels uh, kind of overwhelming in times, stressful at times. Maybe you have similar experiences. Trying to stay on top of everything that comes your way in life. You know, for me, it's leading a family, four kids, the desire to see them raised um, in the ways of the Lord. So we come alongside them, and we guide them, and we coach them. At times that are more challenging, we correct, and we discipline in a loving way. We try to be there involved and engaged in their lives, going to their events, supporting them, loving on them. Just, you know, there's quite a lot, there's quite a lot to it. In addition to that, for me, I'm part of this incredible organization, ABC Church, and I um, want to play a significant role in seeing ministry take place in an incredible way. And um, so just taking on qu quite a lot when it comes to that. Oftentimes, it's like the, the list of tasks, you know, is just large and long, and at times it can be quite uh, overwhelming. I'm guessing that you may have similar types of moments within your life where you know, the, the responsibilities that you have just kind of feel weighty in those times. Well, I had a, a moment like this not too long ago and just was going, my goodness, am I going to be able to, to, to stay on top of all of this? There's so much to stay on top of. I remember in that moment just going, oh, God, I need your help. Can you help me? You know? And in that moment, I felt like I just had this... Uh, 
I started thinking about God and started thinking about his capacity for, for handling things, for being able to handle his own affairs, his own, his own life, and the things that he needs to stay on top of. Uh, in addition to that, he's also uh, got a family that he leads. He's got quite a few children that he cares for and is involved in their lives. Not four children, but several billion children. And then he does this crazy thing where he comes to all of us because he cares int intricately about all of our lives and he says, you know what? In the challenges that you go through in life, you can go ahead and just take those challenges and cast them on me. Take all of that anxiety and just put it on me. I'll take it, all of it. I'm like, what a crazy thing to say, you know? But somehow he's able to handle it all. And he does all of that while he's, you know, just sustaining the universe and keeping everything going. He's absolutely incredible. So I was just thinking about this this day and just going, my goodness, God's capacity, his magnitude is absolutely incredible. And as I began to think about that and just share my appreciation and affection from my heart towards him, all of a sudden my perspective just began to change. And rather than thinking about the things that I needed to stay on top of, the stress that I was feeling, the, the feelings of feeling overwhelmed, all of a sudden I just began to think, my God is so much bigger than my, my problems, my challenges, the things that I need to stay on top of. It's incredible when we start to praise God, how it does a couple of things. One is it really, I think, warms his heart and he loves it. And secondly, I think it begins to change our perspective. And um, we realize that he's a God who is able to do significant, incredible things. And he's able to bring breakthrough and answers to the prayers that we're praying the second theme that we're going to look at is point number two, um, pursue God's priorities. So in Matthew 6.10, Jesus continues uh, to teach us how to pray. He says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. One of the things that I love about um, this is it just... This theme, it really brings us beyond ourselves. You know, we're not um, looking inwardly. We're not looking at um, so, somewhat self-centered prayer, prayer requests. Um, in this moment, what we're doing is we're looking at the things that, God, that are important to God, the things that are, he's passionate about, that are on his heart that he loves. And what are those things? Well, I think one of them is that he wants to see all of his creation, every person that he's created, to be in relationship, to come into relationship with him. You know, he sent his son Jesus to come, pay the penalties for our sins so that we wouldn't have to pay the penalty in hell, but rather we could come into a relationship with him. And I think that's really near and dear to his heart is that he wants to see those that are lost and that aren't in a relationship with him yet come into a relationship with him and experience the closeness that they can. I think something else that's important to him is that he also wants to see those that aren't living according to his will, his word, um, rather those that are pursuing sin and experiencing um, a loss of freedom, free, feeling bound and imprisoned because of their sin, to lay down those things and to come and submit their will to his and begin to live out his truth and experience the, the incredible life and freedom that he wants to bring into our lives. So how do we begin to pray these prayers? Um, that his kingdom would come and his will would be, would be done. I think that there are a lot of different ways that we can pray these themes. For me, oftentimes, what this ends up looking like is these types of prayers. Um, Father, I just pray for my friends who don't have a relationship with you. I pray for my relatives who don't have a relationship with you yet. God, I pray that you would just come and just move within their hearts and help them to understand how incredible your love is and that they would begin to desire a relationship with you and to experience this incredible love that you give. Maybe that's one way. Um, I think there's several other ways. Um, for my kids, you know, I pray, God, I just pray that you would just, um, that they would just love you with all of their heart, soul, mind, and strength, that you would raise them up to be mighty warriors for you, that they would go out and be light in the darkness of their schools and light in the darkness of the clubs that they're involved in. God, that you would just put a passion within them, that they would absolutely love you, and give you everything, and love, love you with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. For neighbors, Coworkers, Lord, I just pray that you would work within their lives. Lord, the challenges that they're working through. 
God, when there's marriage struggles, I pray that you come and they would realize just that your truth is the, is the way, that, way to live our lives. We need to pursue you. I pray that they would experience the freedom that you can bring within their lives if they would just do that. So please just move within their hearts. I begin to pray for governmental leaders. Lord, I pray that you would just do the miraculous and move within them. God, that you would just deeply move within their hearts to the point that they would understand that your truth is so important and that we begin to govern our nation within. We experience, experience the, the freedom that can come through that. I begin to pray for our church. Lord, I pray that you would help us to be the church that you've called us to be. God, that we would have an, an incredible impact in this city, that you would move in us in powerful ways and through us in powerful ways, that you would rise us up and help us to, be, to use the gifts and the talents, the abilities that you've given us to minister and just to create an incredible impact through ministry within this city. Bring many into your kingdom. Help those that don't have a relationship with you to come here and to get, get connected and come into a relationship. Help us to, dis, to be effective in discipleship. For me, those are some of the ways that I end up praying um, that God's kingdom would come and that his will would be done. I think part of the beauty of praying um, things that are in line with God's heart is that as we do that, um, our heart really grows close to his. And we begin to take on his passion, his priority. Our heart begins to... Um, to gravitate and grow closer to the things that he loves and grow closer to him in the process. The third prayer theme is 3.3, request provision. Request provision. So Matthew 6.11, Jesus continues. Give us today our daily bread. I think that God cares deeply about um, meeting our needs and providing for us. I think God also cares deeply about um, some of our, just the desires within our hearts and some of the things um, that we would hope, hope to experience or, or long for. And um, as far as this point goes, I'm just going to share a story with you, okay? Something really cool happened last weekend, and I just want to share this because it fits in well. <clears throat> so last weekend... Um, we were part of a soccer tournament up in Denver, okay? We've got our three sons, they all play soccer, and um, one of them's on one team, the other two are on another team, so there's two teams. We ended up going up to Denver last weekend for this tournament called the Denver Cup. It was a weekend thing, we ended up staying overnight, a hotel on fri Friday night, and um, because it's the start of the new soccer season, um, we decided it was time to buy the boys some, uh, some new soccer cleats, Okay? So we went and we started looking around. We realized that we kind of had a short time frame to get them because the tournament was on the weekend. So uh, we started looking that week for some soccer cleats. We went into all of these different stores. And for two of our, two of our sons, it was um, fairly easy to find their soccer cleats. We wanted to find some cleats that were in the right price range, right budget, um, but were also uh, going to be cleats that would last them the, the season and would be really good soccer cleats. So for two of them, it was really easy. We found some that were great budget, um, made well. For the other son, Isaiah, it was a little bit more of a challenge. Okay, Isaiah's feet are in this um, uh, size where it's like he's kind of moving out of boy sizes and now he's moving into uh, men's sizes. So I don't know if it's usually this hard to find cleats, um, but we went and we were like going into all of these stores. We were struggling to find cleats. There was like really expensive cleats. We're like, well, that's not, not what we're aiming for. There were cleats that seemed like they weren't, put, uh, weren't made very well. So we just kept going in all of these different stores. We probably went in like over 10 stores looking for a pair of soccer cleats for Isaiah, and we just kept striking out over and over and over. We ended up buying them this pair of cleats um, that were a little overpriced, and I just thought, I'm not sure that these cleats are going to really like really do well throughout the course of this season. I don't know if they're going to hold up very well. So, um, But the tournament was coming. Okay? So Friday night, we head up to Denver. One of our sons, uh, who has cleats, he ends up playing a game. And then Isaiah was supposed to play later that evening. And I'm thinking, okay, as soon as he plays a game in these cleats, that's it. It's over. You know, At that point, we can't return them. So um, I guess if he plays in the cleats, that's it. But I was really just kind of not thinking that these were the right cleats for him. So that night, it's coming time for his game, and all of a sudden, this big storm blows in, okay? There's lightning, and um, his game ends up getting uh, postponed to like a day or two later. So like, okay, looking at the cleats going, I guess there's, 
another opportunity here to potentially go. One last chance to go and see if we can find them the right paracletes, okay? So um, it's late at night. We go, we check into our hotel, and um, I say to Amy, my wife, I'm like, Amy, I think I'm going to take Isaiah. We're going to go out. I know that there's a few stores that are open super late at night, so we're going to go, and we're going to try to find him a pair of cleats. So she's like, okay. So we go, we get in the van, and I'm like, okay, sit down with Isaiah. We're about to take off and go to these stores, and I just say to him, Isaiah, I need to tell you a story. Something that happened in the past. It was like probably a little over 10 years ago. I wanted to buy your mom um, a really nice birthday present. And I knew that she wanted a pair of Nike Air Max 95s, okay? Nike Air Max 95s. It wasn't 1995. It was like a throwback to like some previous years. Specific color scheme that she wanted. And, and I just thought, oh, it would be like so cool and special to be able to get those for, for Amy. So I ended up, um, we lived in Houston at this time. I went to the largest mall in town, the Galleria. Went down and um, just thought, okay, I'll go into all the different stores and hopefully... I'll find a pair of Nike Air Max 95s. So I go into all of the different shoe stores, and there were a lot of shoe stores. I'm going in and out, in and out, not having any luck, just going into all the shoes. I think I went to every shoe store in the Galleria, and then just came to this point of kind of like discouragement. I'm like, oh, I couldn't find them. In that moment, I just went, God, it would be really, it, I just feel like it would be so cool if I were able to find the shoes that she wanted and to be able to give her those for her birthday. That would be such a special thing. Like, but I've been in every store and I can't seem to find them. In that moment, I just kind of felt like I was going, you see that store over there? That little strange store that you would probably never go to in a million years? Why don't you just go try that store? I'm like, all right. So I ended up walking into this store. Sure enough, there they are. <laughs> the Nike Air Max 95s in the right color scheme at a great price. And I'm like, this is amazing. I was like, this is such a cool moment. I just felt like a little prompting there. And I felt like God was, it, 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 was, it just felt like a, a really cool, close, personal moment where I felt like God was doing something special for something that mattered to my heart. Right? It was great. So I shared the story with Isaiah. And I said, Isaiah, you know, we're here and we're looking for a set of cleats. I think that God can provide, I know that he can provide shoes. He's done it in the past. I'm like, do you think that he can? He's like, I think so. So I'm like, all right, well, let's pray and we'll ask God, God, please help us to find the right pair of cleats for Isaiah tonight. It would be amazing if you could just bring us to the right place. So off we go. We take off in the van. We go to three stores. We go to the first store. There's nothing. We go to the second store. There's nothing. We go to the third store. And we go over to the cleat section. And all of a sudden, there is the perfect pair of cleats. Three sizes too small. <laughs> like, oh, I don't know if you guys have ever had a moment where you've kind of um, thrown something out there, kind of like taking a step of faith, and then kind of like had to backtrack a little bit and wondered if, you know, it's like, oh, is this going to backfire on me because I just prayed and I'm like, I hope that God comes through. What if he doesn't come through? How will that affect us? You know, it's like... So we, uh, we left the third store, went out into the van, and I was like, I felt like I was trying to cover or something. I'm like, I'm like, okay, um, I'm not sure what God is going to do or in, a, in this situation. I'm like, but at a minimum, this has been a super cool experience with you, Isaiah. I'm like, this has been a fun adventure of a shopping trip coming out here at night and trying to find some cleats. Go back to the hotel room, and... Um, our son who had the cleats, he had an early morning game, played his game. And after his game, Isaiah had a game that was coming up. He thought if he plays this game in these cleats, that's it, it's over. So there was like a small window of time between the first game and between Isaiah's game. And um, I just thought in that moment, like, God, it would still be really cool if you could just come through in some way. So I pulled out my app, my map app, and just typed in sporting goods stores. And there was like one store that uh, was within the, the area that it needed to be in. Um, it opened at 10. Isaiah had to be dropped off at his game at 10.15. So really tight window. And I thought, all right, well, I guess this is our last opportunity. So we go over. They open at 10. We're, wait, we're there a few minutes early and just waiting. 
<clears throat> and as soon as we turned the key and opened the door, here we are waiting to get into this store. We're like 15 minutes. God, it would be amazing. So we open up the door and we just haul it back to the back wall to the cleats section. I get there first. Isaiah's coming up and I'm just looking at the cleats. And when Isaiah comes up, all of a sudden he goes, there they are. I was like, which ones? And he grabs this cleat off of the wall and he hands it to me and I'm looking at it and I'm going, they're the perfect price. They look like they could last the entire season. They're well put together. They're well constructed. The sales rep comes over and I'm like, do you guys have these cleats in a pair of, in a size seven and a half? They take the cleat, walk around the corner. I'm like, oh, please God. Come back around the corner carrying this box. Pair of size seven and a half. In the, in the perfect cleat. I'm like, Isaiah, try them on. Let's see, if the, let's see if they fit. So he goes and he sits down and as he's trying them on, he just says this. He goes, he goes, I was praying for these this morning. And for me, that was just such a special moment, you know, where he was praying a prayer of faith, just asking God to come through. Something that was small, but something that, that mattered to him, to his heart. And um, I just thought, what an incredible moment. Because I think back to the Nike Air Max 95s and just how personal that felt to me when God came through in that moment. I thought, this is such a cool, special little time because I think he just had a similar moment like that where God just came through something that mattered to his heart. So Jesus teaches us um, to pray prayers of provision and, um, and that God will come through I think at times he'll even come through when it comes to some of the desires of our hearts as well. <laughs> Point number four is the fourth theme that we're taught, which is request and extend forgiveness. So he continues on in Matthew 6, 12. And forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Um, the reason that we can have communication with our Heavenly Father is because of what He's done for us. He sent His Son, Jesus, to come and to pay the penalty for our sin. Um, now, because of His grace, it means that we don't end up having to pay the penalty for our sin, but we can be forgiven and receive His forgiveness. And that's an incredible, incredible thing. In addition to that, um, I think oftentimes when we sin, we feel feelings of guilt and shame that sometimes we carry around with us. I don't know about you guys, but I still struggle with areas of temptation. I still struggle with areas of sin. At times I still feel elements of shame and guilt. But it's incredible to know that our Father loves us and He wants us to come and pray to Him and just cast these cares on Him, bring our sin before Him and ask Him for forgiveness. He'll take our guilt, He'll take our shame, and He can wash it away. I think it's interesting that um, immediately following the Lord's Prayer, I think oftentimes we think it ends, um, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever, amen. But it actually ends with Jesus um, giving us a teaching um, in relation to forgiveness. And this is what he says in Matthew 6, 14 to 15. He says, for if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. I like the way that C.S. Lewis puts this. He says this. He says, to be a Christian means to excuse the inexcusable. Because God has excused the inexcusable in you. I think this is some great motivation because when I think of the challenge of forgiving those who have sinned against us or wronged us, it can be hard. But the reality is, is that we didn't, we didn't deserve the forgiveness that we've received from Christ, from Jesus. We've sinned against him. We deserve punishment, but he comes and he offers us forgiveness for our sins. He gives us something that we don't deserve. And hopefully, when it comes to the challenge of forgiving others, we can use that as our motivation. We didn't deserve it, but we received it. And others, when they sin against us, when they hurt us, they probably also don't deserve to experience the forgiveness or to receive forgiveness from us but we're supposed to forgive them and give them that which they don't deserve as well. 
Final prayer theme, number five, is request protection. Request protection. <clears throat> so, um, continues on, Matthew 6, 13, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. I think this is a, a prayer that we pray quite frequently. Lord, I pray that you come and you protect me, protect my kids, protect my, my spouse, protect my family, protect my relatives. Please protect us. And uh, I think God responds to those prayers in times as well. We're told in Scripture that we do exist within a battle. And the battle is not against flesh and blood, but the battle is against principalities and against powers. That there's a real enemy, Satan, who, who um, his, his desire is to steal, to kill, and destroy um, we know that he's got evil forces that work with him as well. But we also know, um, you know, that God, uh, he can send angels to, to look out for us, to protect us, to help us. We know that he's moving within us as well. And sometimes what ends up happening is we find ourselves in this battle where when it comes to elements of protection, sometimes the attack can come in the area of temptation. I think oftentimes it does. So in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, we're given um, just some guidance when it comes to how we can kind of fend off some of these attacks. I'm told this, no temptation is over, overtaking you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you're tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. I'm grateful for this guidance because it's helped me a lot in life. And I think when it comes to praying prayers for protection, oftentimes God invites us to be involved in the process when it comes to experiencing um, a protected life. Temptation comes at us in times, and this is oftentimes how it works within me when it comes to prayer and the process of temptation. You know, oftentimes I'll feel tempted. I'll feel weak. I feel like there's a significant challenge there, that there's a chance that I may end up giving into it. And in those moments, I think of this passage and just think, Okay, God, I pray that you would help me. You say that in these moments that you'll always give me a way out so that I can stand up under it. And right now I feel weak and I need your help, concerned that I may give in. What I've noticed is that there's, there's always a moment in time where you have the choice to stand up and get out. Um, it's just being sensitive to the Holy Spirit in those moments, listening to his voice and making the choice empowered by him in those moments. So I like, feel like there's moments where I'm just like, God, pray that you would, you would just help me in this time because I feel weak and I'm concerned that I'm going to give in. God's saying, okay, you've got a choice in this moment. You can either choose to give in to the temptation, head down the path of sin, or in this moment, you can choose the way out that I'm giving you. And there's always this split-second moment where the way out just presents itself. And I think, okay, God, I pray that you would help me in this time to make the right choice, to choose your path of protection when it comes to this. I know that I'm empowered by you to make the right choice. And I pray that you would just help me in this process. Choose the right path. Enter into, into a, a moment of prayer and engage with God in those moments. He invites us into the process of experiencing protection within our lives. So those are the five prayer themes that were taught um, in the Lord's Prayer. And what I want to do is I just want to leave you guys with a, um, a challenge today when it comes to your prayer life. Um, for our, our family, for Amy and I, it's really important um, that our kids have a healthy, vibrant, um, personal prayer life with the Lord. So, um, you know, we try to help them to learn how to pray. And um, it's important for us as well that they're able to pray and lead others in prayer as well. And um, every now and then what we'll find is as they're praying maybe over a meal or before bed or whenever it may be, every now and then we, it seems like we just kind of fall into a little bit of a rut. And um, within the rut, what ends up happening is you just kind of see them praying the same things that they kind of always pray, a little bit like disengaged from the, their, their thoughts or from their heart. And in those moments, every now and then we'll just say, okay, here's a challenge for you. The challenge is, not to pray the same thing that you pray every time, but to pray something completely different this time. I think that might be a good challenge for us. I feel like there are times where possibly we may get into a little bit of a rut, and as a result, feel a little bit more disengaged, um, not as close in our relationship with the Lord. So what I want to challenge you, encourage you to do this week, is this. We walked through five different prayer themes. 
And um, there are so many different ways that you can approach this. There are so many different ways that you can pray these five themes. There are probably hundreds, if not thousands, of different ways that you can engage in these five different themes when it comes to um, your prayer life and, and communicating with the Lord. So for you, you may choose this week to pray one of those, and it may take you 10 seconds, okay? You may choose to pray one, and it may take you 20 minutes. You may choose to, to pray for a couple of hours, and you may choose to, or you may end up praying for three or four. But what I want to encourage you to do this week is just to um, maybe begin to communicate with God in a slightly different way, a fresh way, a new way um, that will help you in the process of just engaging with Him. Pray in a way that you um, feels effective for you. Pray with themes that you feel are effective to you. Um, my hope would be, as you do that and as I do that, hopefully all of us um, would grow closer to the Lord uh, when it comes to prayer and, um, and feel just more engaged and passionate in the process as well. Sound good? Mm -hmm. Well, let's bow our heads and we'll pray together. Heavenly Father, um, just grateful uh, that we get to experience the type of relationship that we do with you. Thank you for all that you've done to make it possible. The fact that we can even communicate with you is purely because of what you've done, sending Jesus to the cross on our behalf. Thank you, Jesus, for coming and dying on the cross for us. Thank you for making a way that we can be in relationship with you. And um, thank you also for just guiding us when it comes to this process of prayer and communication, how to connect with your heart. Lord, I pray this week that you would just guide us in this process. Help us to grow closer to you through it um, and help us to just engage and be passionate about the process of just being in relationship with you. We love you, God. We're grateful uh, for your love for us and we pray this all in your incredible name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. We hope you've enjoyed this message. For additional talks, please visit abcchurch.com.